Hey everyone, it's Stephanie here, and today I have my May paper doll layout to share. It's a little bit late this month. I got a little bit behind during the month of May, so I didn't get to get this created until this past weekend. So I apologize for it going up a little bit late, and I'm hoping to get June up within the month of June. So anyway, for this month I decided to base my page on a movie. Um, any of you who follow the series know that I base my different layouts each month on either a movie or a TV quote. Um, I usually use movies, but I have used one TV quote so far. And I just pick out a quote from a movie that I really like, um, from a movie that I really like, and I just base my um, paper doll pa page on that. And I just kind of, I have a lot of paper doll stamps just because I like them, so I have quite a bit to choose from to be able to kind of depict the characters that I'm trying to recreate. So you can probably guess right from the beginning here what this is based on. This is from the movie The Little Mermaid and I decided it was time to do a Disney movie just because I love them and this is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. And the Sea Sally stamp from Prima is perfect for this page. So the hair is a little bit different than what Ariel normally wears in the movie but I just made it work and colored it with her same hair color. So you can see here that I stamped the image onto a piece of text paper. This is just an older piece I think from October afternoon that I've had for quite some time. So you can just kind of pull from your stash or buy more current text paper if you like to stamp on text paper. And I'm just using my Spectrum Noir markers to go ahead and color her skin. I like to use either these or Copic markers um, just because they blend really nice and you get a lot of shading and it gives a lot of good definition to make them look like accurate skin tones. And now that I have her skin all colored, I forgot to color her hair, so I'm going to end up going back to that in a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and stamp all of the pieces to cover up her mermaid body. So I'm using die cuts with a view glitter paper. And I picked out a purple color that matches the top of her in the movie. And then I also picked two shades of green. The bottom of this mermaid's a little bit different than Ariel's actual body in the movie, but um, I decided to just make it work as best as I could with what I had. So I'm using archival ink to stamp on this glitter paper, just because it's kind of a hard paper to stamp on. It doesn't dry very well. And stamping with the archival ink helps it set into that glitter paper and makes it so it doesn't smear. So now I'm just taking my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and cut all these pieces out. And now you can see here they're all cut out. And I'm going to do a little bit of layering. I have this old Fiskars border punch. I still actually have quite a few of these border punches. I really love, used to love using them. And I pulled this one out so that I could add a little bit of scallop to the bottom area of this piece of um, her fin. Just because I want to do a little bit of layering. Not too much, but I just wanted to put a little bit of the darker color um, green glitter paper at the top. And then I'm going to put um, some of the darker color at the bottom as well. And this just gives it a little bit of contrast and gives it a little bit more dimension since there's not a whole lot going on with her fin and I didn't want it to look really flat. So I just thought the different colors and then the addition of the scallops really helped to make that part stand out. So as always, I'm just using some liquid adhesive and adding it to the areas of the mermaid that I'm going to be adhering the glitter paper to. And I like to use the liquid adhesive because it kind of gives a little bit of time for you to be able to move your pieces around so that you can kind of make sure you position them directly in the lines of the stamped area. So I really like that. It just gives a little bit more um, play time than the actual tape runner does. So I like to be able to kind of move it around, make sure everything's where I want it before I know it's fully adhered down. So now while those are all um, adhering and I know that they're going to stick, I, I gave them a little bit of extra time just because it is that weird glitter paper and it's a little bit harder to adhere down. I'm going to work on the rest of the page. So since this is the Little Mermaid theme, I went through my stash and picked out a couple of stamps to represent Sebastian and Flat Flounder. Um, I found this cute little crab image in one of my Lawn Fawn stamp sets, and then I also found this fish in one of my Simon Says Stamp stamp sets. And they're not exactly like the character, but like I said, I take what I have and I make it work for what I'm trying to pro portray in the scene. And I think that these two images ended up working really well. So I'm just using some colors similar to the colors that they are in the actual film. Um, Sebastian is obviously red. And then for flounder I'm using, I tried to use some of the same shades of yellows and blues to color this fish in here. This one's a little bit more striped than what flounder actually is in the movie, but I just kind of made it work with what I had and fully colored him in with the blues and yellow colors. And then once I have those completely colored in, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them both out with scissors as well. I believe both of these have coordinating dies and I 
don't even know 100% if I have them, but I really wanted to have the images cut out right against the ink line and not have any white border. So regardless of dyes or not, I decided to go ahead and cut those out with scissors. So now you can see here, I remembered that I completely forgot to cut out her hair or color her hair. So I'm going to go ahead and use some red colors to add all the color into her hair. Now the one little section at the top is a headband there and I didn't really realize that it was until I finished completely coloring her hair and then I realized that I had colored that headband as well. And I just decided to add some gems to that and just leave it as is. So you'll see a little bit later that I just put some gems over top of that headband piece. So I'm just using some red colors with Copic markers and just kind of blending them out. And then I'm taking um, a really red dark marker and adding a little bit of shading and stuff into the hair just so it has a little bit more dimension and doesn't look too flat. So now for the quote part, I d just went ahead and printed this on my computer like I always do. And I printed out part of the song of Part of Your World and just I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing. It's one of my favorite parts of that song, and that song is one of my favorite parts of the movie. So I knew that that's what I wanted to use as my quote for this page. So I went ahead and printed it onto a piece of 6x8 cardstock. This is Nina Solar White. And now I'm just using some Distress Inks from Tim Holtz to add color to this whole piece so that it looks like it's water. So I started out with Tumble Glass first, and it was really, really light, and I wanted it a lot darker than it was, so I could have actually just skipped that step because I ended up completely covering any of the tumble glass up um, by using this Mermaid Lagoon ink. It's the perfect blue to kind of create a sea scene that I was doing here, so I went ahead and generously added that all over the piece. I left it a little bit white around the quote area just so that the quote stands out from the water, and I didn't worry too much about the bottom area because I'm going to be covering that with some pattern paper. And then once I had the Mermaid Lagoon done, I added some peacock feathers just to put a little bit of aqua color into the water. And then once I had that all finished, I decided to do the bottom area, which is going to be the sand. And I picked out this fun paper from this Cartabella Ahoy paper pad. And it's just like a brown color that kind of looks like sand. And it's got a lot of seashell um, pattern on it. And I just thought it was kind of cute to have that for the bottom area just because of the seashells and the sand look it has. So I'm just using the My Favorite Things Snowdrift dies to cut out some stitch detail on the tops of these little sand pieces and then I'm just adhering them directly onto the card, the card stock piece that I have here. And I just layered one on top of the other and this just allows for a little bit of dimension and it's going to give me an area to kind of anchor in some of the seaweed grass that I'm going to be adding to the page in a little bit here. So I'm just kind of positioning everything, making sure everything's going to fit how I want it. I knew that I wanted to have Sebastian down in the little sand piece and that I wanted Flounder kind of swimming towards Ariel in the scene. So now that I know where I want to keep them, I'm going to go ahead and add all this little, these little grass pieces. And I just cut these out of the My Favorite Things Fishbowl Dynamics. There's three different sizes of grass, so I just went ahead and cut them out a few times with some green pattern paper. And I'm just kind of positioning those um, in the different areas at the bottom, kind of in the open areas. And I'm just, like as always, using some liquid adhesive to adhere those down. And then I'm just adding an acrylic block on top to kind of hold them down until the glue sets onto the paper. And then once I have all of the grass adhered, I'm going to go ahead and start to actually assemble my layout. But before I did that, I decided that I wanted the water to look a little bit more, have a, like kind of more detail to it. And one of the fun things about Distress Inks is that it reacts with water. And I didn't want to go crazy and completely cover it, and I didn't want to get the bottom area really wet, but I did want to create a couple like spots of water droplets. So what I did is I just took my water bottle and I sprayed it onto an acrylic block, and then I just took a paintbrush and kind of dipped it in the water and then dabbed it all over the background. And you can kind of see there that some of those spots are starting to form and spreading out that ink and giving like a white look, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have it make it kind of look like water droplets throughout, just to give it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more detail and make it look as realistic as I could. So now that that's done and those droplets there were dry, I went ahead and used my liquid adhesive and started to adhere all the pieces. So I added Ariel on first and then also added flounder and then the little crab for Sebastian is at the bottom in the sand. And now to finish it off, it was a little bit plain. I put some water bubbles um, around flounder above and below the, the quote 
And then I also used the little fish dies or fish stamps that are in the same set from that little flounder fish from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm using some grout gray ink to go ahead and stamp those randomly around the background just to make it look like some more fish are swimming in the water, but not take away from the actual focal parts of the piece. And then now you can see here, like I said before, I just took some gemstones, some different sizes. I'm not 100% sure who makes these gems. They're just, they were in my drawer. Um, I just used some crystal clear ones, and I just started with some bigger ones in the center and then went smaller on the outside and added those to her headband area. And then I also added a few more gems in various spots around the layout, kind of in a triangle pattern just to kind of draw the eye into the layout. So that's my layout for this month. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next month. Thanks for watching.